on this. Hello, we're recording this now. Let me um, try and go here on, uh, you do not have permission to stream. What is this? Hold on, folks. Just wait a second. I do not have the permission to stream. Uh, pay, pay, I got to copy that. Okay, let me get rid of this uh, here. And let me try this again now. Let me try getting us on uh, on uh, on Facebook so people can watch it if they want to. Okay, there we go. Copy, paste, and paste. Okay, and paste. And now I go live. Is it going to say the same thing? Uh, no. Now it works. See, I. <laughs> Sorry, that was a little bit of a setback there for a second. What it was is that I have to uh, tell it to go and uh, zoom, and uh, it goes out and it zooms, but it doesn't tell you exactly what you're what you're doing and so on. But we are supposedly going out on Facebook, and we are going out recording here. I don't see any notifications to that extent, however. Oh, yeah, well. Pause, stop recording more let me see here just for a second stop live stream and we're going okay we're okay i'm sorry about that folks i really am and let me move this back a little bit that's my new microphone by the way but we don't uh, we don't show it because i don't like showing microphones on on camera okay as opposed to all those other people who go out and buy phones and then they got to put them on a stand and you see them in their podcasts and it's just, it's a, it's unprofessional. Okay. And I'm a professional. Okay. Let's go and bring all these people in. Admit all. Okay. All these people are, are, are definitely here. Okay. Uh, first of all, there is Charlie Wallace, and uh, there is me, of course. There's, there's uh, Marjorie. Hello, Marjorie. Are you still married? <clears throat> okay, I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> uh, Paula, hello, Paula. How are you? Paula Levin up there I'm in, uh, in uh, uh, Ohio. Uh, we have, of course, uh, our favorite voice in um, on the whole panel, Edward Berger. That's right. I couldn't believe that voice the first time I heard it. Uh, uh, Mike Chisholm is here. Hey, uh, everybody. Yeah. And uh, there's uh, uh, our uh, Andrew Deutsch and our good friend uh, John M. Ewing up there in Tiburon and Francine Witt, who is here in Manhattan with us. Um, uh, hey, I got something for, uh, for um, Mike Chisholm here that he might enjoy yes, what do we got let me go up here to uh virtual background okay so i have my virtual uh, this is my real background now i want to go to a virtual background and um turn this off wait a minute let me get the background first oh it isn't here i <laughs> thought i put it in here son of a bitch oh well oh, i was going to do something fun here so but much for that dave studio yeah, I don't know where it is now. I thought it was I thought it was in here. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Okay. Let's see here. Uh oh, okay. Let me turn this off. Good to see it you. It's Dave there. Studio. How there it you? is. Huh? I said it is Dave Studio. Excellent. Yeah. It's a Dave Letterman set. Yeah. Fantastic. You know how I got rid of Dave? This is, Dave was originally in this. Yes. And then you, you photoshopped him out? Photoshop. Photoshop allows you to use AI to remove people from any photograph. So I just removed him and here we are. Okay. Do you have any do you have one of these? I can send it to you. That'd be fantastic. Uh my wife, by the way, is trying to do that technique with our wedding photos right now as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> Get rid of your uncle Gus or you? Yeah, and uh, Charlene Solis is, a, uh, is about ready to join us here. I noticed she was just trying to get in, and I was not letting her in. Um, and uh, I think, uh, but anyway, I'll, I'll send you a copy of this. 
Uh, Fantastic. Please do. It it only took me several hours before I could figure out how to do it. You know, (laughs) here's my normal background I use on the show, but I'm not going to use any background right now. Okay. Alex, speaking of which, I think I met somebody uh, from 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 your past who was a pleasant memory for you. I know you are for him. I was on a gentleman named Johnny Max uh, show the oh, other John day. John McDermott. Well, he called me. He called me, and I did a show with him. Oh, excellent! Yeah. That's fantastic. Oh, that makes me that makes you very happy. Well, I haven't he, seen he, John since or talked to John since I left Sirius XM. That's what he, he was said. Taking care of the comedy channels at the time and a few other things. And I think he was let go about the same time I was. That's uh, that's how I read it as well. Yes. Yeah, yeah. They cleaned some house. Yeah. But I and I used to talk to him. You know, I did this thing about my life, which is called Life in the Passing Lane. And he, he has basically a podcast distribution company. And uh, he's going to take on the uh, Life in the Passing Lane and put it out there. Yeah. That's fantastic. So, uh, you know. Because I'd like to have it a lot, get a larger exposure than it's gotten. You know? It's great. Yeah. It's super great. I love it. I've gone through it twice. The e- whole thing. E- oh, really? I have yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. I did it the first I, I, time I, with Shecky. And then after that, I did it again after he passed as well. I, I think it's magnificent to be t- telling you the truth. I, uh, in spite of the fact that I did it myself. And I could not do it now because I can't remember all that stuff. <laughs> But, uh, you know, it's 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 damn good. And I told him about it and he said, oh, yeah, we'll be happy to do something with it. So we're going to talk about that. Good. Anyway, uh, on the other hand, Marjorie and I about a week ago did a uh, thing at the at what at the restaurant right on Father's a little five minute thing, a little five minute thing. Right. One of our little rambling. Nothing happens much really i I would think dull but we got over a thousand views (laughs) crazy what is that all about you know why is that i work my ass huh so we love you guys that's what that's about it's a great comedy team (laughs) i believe it's all marjorie myself but that's just me you you what (laughs) I believe it's just Marjorie herself. I think that's that's. I, that's, I think that's it is. I think. Well, I I call it Marjorie and Alex. You may notice every time I put it up, <laughs> I give her Mar- top billing. You know, as you should, uh, because otherwise I'd never hear the end of it. So, right. uh, <laughs> you know, always that's got your money me. maker right there, buddy. You got to be George, and she can be Gracie. But <laughs> my my money maker. You're talking about her like she's a hooker. <laughs> Well, they have different ways of doing the job, I suppose. But yes. Yes. <laughs> She's your moneymaker. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so, I mean, I guess people enjoy the two of us together saying nothing. Yeah. It's sweet. It's we should sweet probably put go a, for walks in the park. It's really sweet. We probably should just shoot us kissing and put that up on TikTok and see what kind of ratings it gets. That's enough to have everyone turn off their... <laughs> <laughs> we can title it this will make you vomit <laughs> you know. but anyway so uh h- hello to everybody it is monday i always love this because it's just a nice group of people um who are very protective of themselves but uh, <laughs> so what have you been doing uh mr chisholm up there in uh, canada been really busy uh lots of stuff going on just with uh letterman podcast uh, being my you know the thing that brings me so much joy but lots of lots of work stuff unfortunately and just uh i hate i hate every monday when i when i miss this thing so uh we hey you know who we have on tonight i'm recording tonight do you remember the gal every year that would come on the late show and uh would be the toy expert and before christmas uh, Dave would have her on talking about the new toys of the new season. Yeah. I record with yeah. her tonight, so that's going to be fun. Oh, really? Think... She was on the show 19 times. Really? Yeah. Wow. So there um, you go. Yeah, that uh, you know, but it was it was always fun, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I've been watching the theatrics of your political system from up here as well over the last week. Theatrics of our political system. You mean that that uh, reality show we're having on Thursday? <laughs> an episode of uh, the reality show 
Because the whole stuff. thing plays out like a reality show now. This is America. This is our institution. This is our democracy. And we're treating it like it's a TV show. What have we become? Probably what we were always planning to be, you know. Uh, but anyway, so I, you know, uh, it, they're, they're plugging it. Oh, boy, are they just flogging <laughs> it on these news channels. Oh, Guess what's happening Thursday night? It's a big showdown, you know. It's Hulk Hogan versus the Iron Sheik. <laughs> uh, it's, it's pretty much what's what it's like, you know. It's it's WrestleMania 17 or something. Hmm. I was going to say I was at WrestleMania 17, but I wasn't. I was at WrestleMania 18. That's funny. Uh, we're all up here, though. You know, we're not paying attention to it as much because tonight – is one of those rare things uh, that, and a lot of Canadians are going to be watching TV tonight. Uh, it's game seven of the Stanley cup finals. And oh, that's a course. very, very big deal up here. For that's sure. a big deal. Yeah. I've actually held the Stanley cup. Me too. It's amazing. I, ha I have held it in my hands. Yeah. Uh, somebody that came by to Sirius XM one day when they were in town and brought the Stanley cup. And I'm going, Amazing. Can, can you drink out of it? And they went, no. Then I said, what good is it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I know quite a few people who have drank out of that cup. So it's, is it just one cup and they pass it around according to who uh, is the Yeah, champion? they just engrave their yeah. name on it and they get to keep it for a year or whatever. Am I right? There's actually two Stanley Cups. There's the one that's in the uh, the Hockey Hall of Fame and then there's the original uh, one and and there are ways to figure out which one. So if it, sometimes when you go to an event and the Stanley Cup is there, you don't know if it's the original one or not unless you know the uh, cues to look for uh, to know if it's the replica or not. So there are cues that'll tell you if it's the real one or not, and you can go down that path. And really, yep, yeah. I'm the 1984 85 Edmonton Oilers. Uh, the owner of the team put his father's name on the cup. And that's a no-no. And so the league found out about it and they put a bunch of X's through his dad's <laughs> name. So if you go to the 845 Oilers and you see the X's, then you see that that's the, that's the real cup. Once you, once you uh, uh, engrave it, you can't unengrave it, right? You can't put some putty in there or something and redo it. Uh, in 1984, 1985 technology, the answer was let's just put X's over the name. So I'm not sure. Now yeah. they could probably do some things to it. Yeah, too, but uh, it, 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 engraving is pretty permanent, you know. So, what was the year that the Flyers won? I, you know, like I remember that the, the city went crazy, but I don't remember. Eight seventy nine, I believe. The Broad Street Bullies. Indeed. Yeah. 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 Well, well, the Oilers repeat history. Well, yeah. Americans are allowed to win the Stanley Cup, aren't they? Uh, Canadians have oh, not won the Stanley Cup. Well, I mean, don't get me wrong, like. Many of the times that the teams win the Stanley Cup, the team is, you know, filled with Canadians players, but we haven't seen a Canadian team to win the Cup since 1993 when the Montreal Canadiens did it. So if the Edmonton Oilers win tonight, it's a big, big, big deal. Okay. Up here. Yeah. Okay. Because you must be pissed that you haven't been winning at, at hockey, which was pretty much the national sport of Canada. I'm a Kings fan, and yeah. uh, when my when my Kings won their first Stanley Cup in 2012, I believe 18 of the 26 players were Canadian. So it's just one of those things where, you know, well, we're used I to thank it. You, I thank you very much for bringing this information to us and allowing me to own Miami for one more year. <laughs> <laughs> and By to bore the, way, the hell uh, out of all of you. The Oilers were down 3-0. Yes. And they've come back to tie it. And if they win tonight, they'll be the first team to do that since 1942. That's really? right. It's a huge a, deal. There's a friend of mine named Stanley with a really high-pitched voice because you guys took his cup. <laughs> <laughs> if ever you go to Stanley Park in Vancouver, named after the same dude, Lord Stanley. Really? It was a Lord? Yes, yeah, so Stanley Park, Park in Vancouver is a gigantic Wait a minute. park. Mort and Stanley? Lord, L O R D, not Mort. Oh, M O R D, Mord. L L O R D, as in Lord. like Lord, oh, Lord. Lord. revered oh, Lord on high. Stanley. He's a Lord, yeah. Oh, Lord Stanley. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so he was a Lord, right? Yep. yep. You guys we don't love talking. Have, you know, guys don't have Lords up there, do you? Well, we're descended from though. I mean, we're still part of the Commonwealth, and our Queen is still on our money. So you know, 
The queen is Lord's... still on the money. Hasn't the king gotten to the money yet? Not yet. We're waiting. We're waiting to see what happens with that. I, not yet, though. So far. Are they uh... waiting to see if he lives out if he, a year or something? <laughs> yeah, we still got Lizzie for now. Yeah. Still got, got still got Liz. Okay. That's good. That's good. But I uh, you know, I just thought uh um you didn't have lords anymore. So are there people maybe in in Canada who are lords would be were lords in in England and now they live there or something? That's a great question. I don't know the answer to it. I do know that. Know more uh, about your damn country, okay? Not. Why not? Happy you're going to be moving up here in the fall, aren't you? It, it, it's not like the largest landmass in the world without any population in most of it. You know. Lots of caribou, though. I mean, I look at Canada and I go, gee, that's big up there. And then I go, <laughs> oh, well, it's only populated by about 12 people, I think. So. <laughs> The whole populations in the south, those northern parts aren't even provinces, they're territories. Yeah. That's right. And if you go up too high, you they can't even no live up there. <laughs> if you go too high, you can't even live up there. But you could see Alaska from somebody's house, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh boy. No, I we, that's where we should go, Marjorie. We should go to Canada. I'm yeah. ready. I'm I'm ready. I need boring a boring trip, you know. <laughs> and then we can go we can go visit him. See, I always think he's on the East Coast. No, but no. the reason I think that is I think everybody in Canada lives on the East Coast <laughs> because you got Montreal, you got Montreal up there, and you've got you know what Quebec, Quebec, all of that. But you're over oh. on the other side, and you're in. I'm near Vancouver. I'm in a place called Kelowna, which is gorgeous, uh, like a Lake Tahoe type place. But uh, I'm about two hours away, two and a half hours away from Vancouver. Well, his first name is Jerry. Right. <laughs> but where's is, <laughs> what is Kelowna near? Kelowna is um, we're about ninety minutes north of the American border. So like we're 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 close to you guys. We're close to Washington State. Um, and then about two hours, two and a half hours east drive of Vancouver. Okay. So we're, 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 we're a mountain range away from Vancouver. That's, that's, that's fine. So you're almost an American. Well, I wouldn't quite say that, but, you know. <laughs> well, we're, 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 we're almost next door neighbors as opposed to neighbors far away. I take it you were actually born in Canada. Canada, Canada? Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm lucky enough to say that I was born and raised here in Kelowna. Um, our population has tripled or quadrupled since I was born. Like a lot of people have. We well, used to have a show on here. GabNet that actually came out of Canada every night. Up in Revelstoke. Revelstoke. Revelstoke uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Revelstoke, what was his name? Revelstoke Jim. Jim. There you go. Well, I talked to a couple of weeks ago. He called me one day. So it's been a long time since we talked, and I figured I'd call. And I went, good, great. So. Is he still there? Oh, yeah, he's still yeah. there in Revelstoke. Revelstoke, I used to like to say, it's not the middle of nowhere, but you can see it from there. Yeah, you sure can. <laughs> yeah. Uh, world-class hella skiing from Revelstoke, though. Like, world-class. People pay tens of thousands of dollars to come hella ski from in, in the different parts. Of hella Revelstoke. skiing? Yeah, jump out what? of helicopters. When you said that, it sounded like somebody was going, you know, that's hella good, you know. <laughs> Uh, or, so heli skiing is like really good skiing, but you mean they actually take a helicopter? Yep. What to take them to the top of mountains and stuff? Yep. And then drop them off and never see them again. Well, that's not the plan, but that does happen from time <laughs> to time. <laughs> Are there a lot of tall mountains there and things like that? Yeah, it's absolutely gorgeous. Revelstoke is at the foot of the Rocky Mountains, what some consider the most beautiful part of the entire Rocky Mountain range. You go through really? Rogers Pass just on the other side of uh, Revelstoke. And that's how, and how difficult through. is it to get to? Let's say Marjorie and I wanted to go to Revelstoke for our vacation. Oh, yeah. Easy. Super uh, easy. It's 90 minutes from my house. It's how many? 90 minutes from my house. So we can come see you and you can drive us over. Sure. Yeah. I went to Revelstoke with my grandparents when I was a kid. It'd be nice. It'd be bring some memories back. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because I, uh, you know, I would. Uh, it was. It was always nice to tell people that we have, we're doing a show from Canada. Where from? Revelstoke. Where's that? Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's a nice little um, resort 
small resort town, well, ski town. It, it, when ski I first town. started doing this stuff with him, it was pretty remote and nobody went there. And from what I'm told by him and other people, Revelstoke has become a big tourist destination now. Yes. Very much like Kelowna, where I'm from. Uh, they've enjoyed the same trajectory when it comes to A lot to of that. skiing and yep. hunting, I guess, up in that area. World-class hunting up there. Nothing as well. like shooting a moose and trying to put it on your hood. Have you had a moose burger, Alex? Oh, my God. That's Moose <laughs> is delicious. It's so good. Well, I've had deer. I've had rain yeah. when I was in uh, um, um, uh, Lillehammer. Uh, I went over every day and I got a hamburger. It was delicious. Sometimes I did the hamburger twice a day and it was delicious. And then Lori would say to me, hey, are you getting the hamburgers? Yeah, bring me two. And I go get her two hamburgers. And we shovel down about three hamburgers a piece. And all of a sudden, one day we found out it was reindeer. <laughs> delicious. It's delicious. delicious. Absolutely. I... I ate Rudolph. <laughs> Do you have a dancer and prancer special? <laughs> but um, but moose is good too. I mean, well, it's kind of like is a moose a relationship have any relationship to a deer, or is it more like a cow? When I see a moose, I mean they they call it a bull and a cow, but when I see a moose, they look like horses. They're gigantic. Yeah. They're so big. Yeah, yeah, and but uh, uh, and uh, then who shoots them? Do you shoot them? What do you do? How do you kill them? My dad, one of the my dad, I, if you were to ask him if the, he had any disappointments in his son, it's probably that he didn't take up hunting like he he. My dad was an avid hunter, an avid hunter. Yeah. And why did he hunt? What did he see in hunting? Well, first off, the best food you're ever going to have. Like like our freezer was always full of amazing meat growing up as the leanest not processed just delicious and uh so that's part of it and then i think part of it was him and his buddies like it's not an easy thing to do and uh when they would go out they would have so much fun and they, oh, what, they you, would get some canadian are you when they used to go oot come on <laughs> <laughs> <He's almighty. laughs> i'm trying to refine myself a little bit <laughs> Boy. Anybody oh. here ever hunt though? Like Charlie, you're from Texas. There's lots of lots of hunting in Texas. No, no, no hunting here. No hunting in Texas? No, I said not me. There's oh, lots there of hunting in Texas. They lots love their hunting. guns down in Texas. <clears throat> they don't hunt, well, you know, they're hunting, major game they hunt for are people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Charlie, would would you please translate your t shirt? Yes, it says I Eight. Two cubed is eight. Some. Some. <laughs> pie. Okay. <laughs> it's some pie. I have a t-shirt here, but I bet none of you can tell me what this is. Hmm. I know what that is. Hmm. It's Criterion. Correct. That's right. Wow. What's that? It's uh it's they they sell CDs and it's one of a channel. Yeah. Yeah, they said they always, oh, not CDs, DVDs. DVDs. They've always had quality yeah. films, and huh. they're associated with Janus films. And they've had a great library over the years. And I subscribe to their channel now. And so they sent me this thing, like, would you like to buy a T-shirt? And I figured, oh, you know, everybody would go around and ask me, what is that? What's it stand for? You know, cunt. What? What does it stand <laughs> for? Uh, and uh, I, uh, um, that's Criterion. So very good. Gee, you're terrific. You know, you, that's right. Whoops. <laughs> uh, no, the thing with you, uh, uh Edward, uh, is that you just never leave the house. So, yeah, you know, that. no, I do leave the house. But, yeah. Oh, I think Jeff Stein just cloned himself. There <laughs> is Jeff with his son. That's right. His Hi, son, Alex. His, Hi. Son is, his son is the one with the gray beard. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to figure out who's the youngest i forget the name now andrew what? andrew of course yeah. I, it's an easy name to remember but i don't remember names i've always been bad at remembering names because i'm so mm -hmm. self-absorbed with myself that i can't take time to 
remember the names of people. But Andrew, good to see you again, Andrew. Mm. Uh, and one narcissist to another, Alex. Yeah. <laughs> right. I like your I like your Criterion shirt though. That's cool. Yeah. No, I really yeah. I thought it'd be cool to have one. I was getting all these T-shirts that go. Uh, born in 1939 or you know oh, yeah. this in 39 or you know and i figured uh, it's time to get a different t-shirt so i got this. yeah yeah and look at your physical media collection my god yeah that's well, incredible this this stuff i started uh, making copies of everything and uh, stored the dvds in the uh, in here in the closet but i tried to get through them I've still, I must have made 200, you know, files. Yeah. And I didn't even make a dent. You know, still yeah. sitting there like crazy. So, yeah. no, I used to buy DVDs all the time. I wasted my money totally. Are those mostly DVDs or are they Blu rays too? Uh, uh, both, they're Blu rays and DVDs. Yeah. Yeah. It's both. Three, some 3D ones over here as well because I had to have a 3D TV set. Yeah, uh, but the thing was that uh, my friend uh, Shecky collected more than I did. I mean, yeah. he had them. They literally, there was this one room that was his mother's room. <laughs> he called it my room actually because I always slept in there when I went over and stayed overnight. And he, uh, uh, he had. I mean, it was like wall to wall. These things are just amazing. Yeah, backed up everywhere. Yeah. So he always bought more than I did. And I said, what kind of sickness is it that we have that we feel compelled to buy these things? I mean, well, I collected them and I've collected them. And you know how much it, this this is just part of it. The rest of it goes down all the way to the uh, the wall. Yeah. Uh, I, must, I must have at least over a thousand, fifteen hundred DVDs here. Yeah. And um, I said to him, why do we have that? You know, someday they're not going to be worth anything. And all the DVDs I have here are probably worth three dollars. <laughs> you know, because I mean, yeah. what is a DVD worth today or a Blu-ray? Nothing. Just nothing. Blu-rays, Blu-rays have value, but what? DVDs less so, unless it's an out-of-print DVD well, of, of something that hasn't been reissued. Well, I have more one... movies are getting reissued on Blu-ray. Oftentimes I... they're remastered in 4K and whatever. I have one uh disc here uh called uh European Cinema, hmm. which is the history of silent films in and the history of a lot of the major European countries and the <laughs> films they made. And that's worth about 300 bucks. Do you have a DVD player? Yeah. Oh, well, I have a, a Blu-ray player. I've actually, Blu actually, I have a 4K player. You have a PS5, don't you? Yeah, I have a PS5 and a PS5 play everything, you know, um, in, including the, what do they call them? They call them 4Ks now? Is that what they're yeah. calling them? Yeah. 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 Um, Sometimes they use the term steel book if it's a fancy. Oh, that's, um, that's yeah. What they, yeah, with the collector's item. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. They, they still get me, man. I just bought the the steel case, the new one of uh, of uh, True Romance. There you go. And, I mean, really? it's incredible. Oh, it's got all this extra stuff in it, and it's a 4K release a, of that it. Was that was a great movie. Oh, Did they, great. Does everybody know what we're talking about? Yeah. They, nobody like knows what 1993. we're talking about. Yeah. I'm, I bet. I bet. Uh, uh, I'll, I bet Edward Berger knows. No, no, I, I missed that one. Really, true romance. It was written by Quentin Tarantino. Uh -huh. And uh, it was directed by uh, Tony Scott. Tony Scott, who was uh, is dead now, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And uh, it's a great movie about this guy who meets this girl, uh, and things just from get worse. Of uh, worse and worse from there on, you know. Uh, All of the supporting cast in that movie is crazy. I'm not excellent. A, excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Might be the best Marjorie. Chris Walken scene of all time. Must be. Might be the best. Um. Uh. Oh man, I can't believe I brain farting on his name. Um. Um. Dennis Lieutenant Hopper. Gordon. 
Dennis Hopper as well. Yeah, but no, <laughs> also uh, Gary um, Oldman. Thank you, Gary Oldman. Man, yeah. it was gonna drive me nuts. James Gandolfini. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Yeah, it's crazy. But I mean, there's a scene between Hopper and and Walken that is. That's the famous one. Great. Yeah. But who else is great is James Gandolfini is the hitman. Yeah. yeah. And he is just so evil. I mean, just evil. Yeah. Christopher Walken also. Yeah. Well, Walken yeah. well, Walk plays it with a, kind of a like uh, you're amusing me attitude. Yeah. Then he, then he kills him. I'm, you know, I don't. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, who played the Who played the kid in that picture? Christian, Christian Slater. Slater. Christian yeah. Slater. Wow. And the the uh, the <laughs> girl was Patricia Ar Ro Rosanna yeah. Arquette or Patricia no, Arquette? Pat Patricia. Yeah. Patricia. Yeah. Yeah. Great movie. This is a great movie. So it, it so it, really I maybe I'll maybe I'll buy that. It's I should go get it and show it to you. It's in a slipcase and it's got posters in it and it's got like I'm a sucker for that stuff. And then a bunch of uh a bunch of uh behind the scenes stuff as well that I don't wow. believe was on my Because original. there was never any behind the scenes stuff yeah. on the originals. Yeah. So anyway. Uh, but uh anyway. So uh uh, uh I saw, a documentary the, I saw a documentary the other day. It was on PBS. It was a, a Peter Falk, mm. and it was it was uh, uh, it was called Peter Falk is Columbo, mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was great. It was great fun. Uh, you know, the, he he really? brought all the stick that he did. He he was the one that brought it to 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 the script. Yeah, that was his his decision. One of the nicest interviews <laughs> I've ever done in my life was with Peter Falk, mm. and he he. He loved me. He thought he just thought I was the best because I was coming up with information about him. He didn't think anybody knew anymore. Really? Yeah. You know, and uh, I mean, just just an extraordinarily nice human being, you know, he was that way in the in this documentary, too. He had, he had this close relationship with uh, John Cassavetes and, and uh, Ben Gazzara. Well, yeah. he, he, I had to remind him that we had actually done an interview way before the one I did at Sirius XM. And he said, when was that? You know, and I said, uh, I was over at WMCA and I was doing an overnight show or WPLJ. I was doing over the overnight show. And you came in with John Cassavetes uh, and uh, I think one other person. Who was the other person? Um and and you were wandering our studios, and there was another show being done in another studio, and you came back, and the famous line you said on my show was, there are hookers in the other studio. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I, I reminded him of that, and he didn't, <laughs> he actually didn't remember the hookers, but because somebody was interviewing prostitutes in the other studio. If anybody would be good at wandering, you'd think Peter Falk would be that guy. He just looks like he'd be a guy. <laughs> oh, he, no, he wanders just, into he, things. He, he went, walked out of our studio and walked around the floor, and there was somebody doing a show in there. And I think he maybe even opened the door, and they were talking to hookers. What show did I call? Huh? <laughs> I'm at work. Can we keep the hooker talk down? A little bit? <laughs> we'll call them underpaid yeah. professionals. So, so, so Mr. one of the few, one of the few who actually work on this panel. That's right, <laughs> Mr. Neri. You uh, called us. You want to get a hooker? <laughs> oh yeah, that's nice. I have a new boss to start today. Next door, so. you have a preference. I gotta give Perfect. her a, give her a tour at two o'clock. So, yeah, setting the tone, setting the tone. <laughs> hey, as you pass by one of the. One of the uh, uh, rooms just point in and they say, oh, there, there are hookers in there. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, no, he was a sweet guy. Sweet guy. Uh, in fact, I even have a photograph with him. Um, nice. But you couldn't see eye to eye with Sammy Davis Jr. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You know, I had a friend, Steve Gruberg. Who was either missing an eye or it just was dead? Mm. Okay, you couldn't see out of one mm. or the other. I can't remember now. And it never supposedly you could tell it never moved and things like I never noticed it. 
Mm. Some reason I, that's something I just I can't I couldn't even notice it in Peter Falk when he was right looking at me face to face, and I don't know why that is. I think I have a blind eye to that sort of thing. Oh. <laughs> but no, truthfully, I just I never knew my friends. I knew my friend Steve was missing an eye because I would kid him every now and then about, well, too bad we can't go to a 3D movie together, yes. you know, things like that. But I never, did you ever see it, Marjorie? When you no. were with Steve? No. Yeah, yeah, one eye gone completely, shot. My grandmother had a, my grandmother had a glass eye. Oh, yeah. I think she had cancer, but she, when I was growing up, she had a glass eye and she had to take it out to clean it. Absolutely. Oh, ooh. My grandmother, yeah. I, luckily, no, I never saw that. I wouldn't but, mind but. if you wanted to give me a fake eye if I, you know, lost my eye, okay? If you wanted to give me a false eye. But I don't want to be able to have to take it out. You know. That's spooky. Anyway. That, those kind of things make me... What makes you... Marjorie gets queasy about certain things. Don't you, Marjorie? Yeah, yeah. Like me, you you look at me and start to vomit all the time. Every time. Yeah, every time. <laughs> My wife likes to watch the surgery. <laughs> on the... There it is. Does anybody else in here like to watch surgeries on the TV? What? The surgery show is on TV. Does anybody else? Yeah, like I can't do it. Surgery. Stuff. Something's wrong with Man. my wife. Trust me. What? 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 What surgery? show well, there's there's all sorts of surgery shows on, on, oh, yeah. on television and really? a lot of people love them i can't i can't do it i had a girlfriend once who had a satellite dish and this was in the days where if you had a satellite dish you could watch all the network shows off of it and you could you could get everybody who wanted to use a satellite and watch them and one day we're flipping around and we come across an autopsy channel <laughs> And the whole thing was a 24-7 wall-to-wall autopsies. Pass the popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't sit there and watch it for a while till we couldn't take it any longer. But Hey, we uh, watched rugs being clean. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that's that's our fav- that was our favorite Rugs channel. being clean. <laughs> that was our favorite channel for a while on uh, YouTube. How many have watched There's- the rugs being clean channel? I tried. You, but, uh, <laughs> you watch. You watch it, Andrew. Why? Why? See now, Andrew wasn't here when we discussed it last, and he found it on his own. Was that yeah. not amazing? Didn't you find yourself addicted to it? Yeah, it. I, I didn't go to go to the YouTube channel, but it got suggested to me on Instagram. You know, so yeah. it's it's ninety second. Uh, you know, time oh, lapse. You should the see the planning. full 45 minutes of yes. Alex. That is psychotic. <laughs> <laughs> we had we people over. one after another. We had guests over and we were smoking some pot <laughs> and just watching the rugs get. And this is like I, the new I, watching. I, mean, I mentioned this, this thing about the rug channel, which Marjorie didn't know about because I just found it a couple of nights earlier. And uh, we started watching it, and everybody's like, you know, it's like, don't stop it. Don't put it. Put it on pause. Don't move it forward. We got to see how this turns out. Yeah. You know way, what? What's... I don't understand how people watch it, and I don't understand furthermore why they admit to it or brag about it. What is this? <laughs> I, I will. Gu- I would guarantee you this, Paula, that it when when you come over to see us next time, which is in we'll a couple watch of weeks, rugs being cleaned. I will find the rugs being cleaned, and I will put one on, and I bet. You will be mesmerized by it. Am I right, Andrew? After three bong hits, you'll yeah. be you'll be right as rain <laughs> on the rug channel. Well, first of all, they get this rug that's like caked with dirt. I don't know. They're what disgusting. They're, it looks like a dead animal. Well, I think they go to places where there were floods and stuff like yeah, that. Exactly. And yeah, exactly. They're just caked with mud. They've been rolled up. They go. I think they go out to like uh, uh, junkyards and so on and find. Yeah. Okay. They bring them back, and they start hosing them off, and then they start cleaning them. And they're all this dirt and mud is flowing out of them like crazy. But slowly, whatever the pattern is going to be, starts emerging. And then you go, oh, ah. And they start cleaning some more, and it gets better and better. And by the end, you've got a beautiful rug. 
but you don't know what the run is going to be until they get about 15 minutes in. You know, yeah. no idea. Oh, what oh so or... now I understand. There's, there's a suspense. I, I, and yeah. There's, also, there's <laughs> a catharsis. There's a catharsis. What is the pattern and can they actually clean it? That is the suspense. And, yeah. And when yeah. they turn it over. You know, you know, Alex, yeah. the real psychotic viewing is when you go on that autopsy channel to watch your own autopsy. No, you turn in the autopsy channel to watch people clean rugs. No. <laughs> That's only if they were wear one. Yeah. <laughs> I used to go watch surgery. All but it was it it was it was mesmerizing. Marjorie even watched. I mean, Marjorie was kind of like <clears throat> there's some it, right there was some kind of catharsis to it. Yeah, but in the beginning, I'm saying I don't believe there's four people here, and we're adults, and we're watching this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Don't you don't you watch the surgery ones to see if a junior mint falls in? <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you, I found I found uh that those rug cleaning videos better than porn. <laughs> now or before? And and it wasn't when you're they, younger. It, it wasn't that they were dissimilar, porn and the rug cleaning things, because really nothing much happens i mean in porn what happens yeah. you know, is, is you, do you have you ever watched a porn film and said i wonder how this is going to end <laughs> <laughs> which end ah. <laughs> what what is that which end <laughs> how the porn film ends <laughs> oh the movie itself i see <laughs> itself, yeah. yeah they are pretty similar alex how do you they're know those pretty, carpets weren't used in a porn? Well, path? no, they're, uh, that's right. Explain how you think they're they're similar. Well, the only thing that happens is that the the pattern is revealed, meaning what someone you know looks like is revealed yeah. after a second, and then yeah, it's yeah, monotonous. Within that fifteen minutes, she doesn't have clothes on anymore. Yeah, yeah. And then they they start uh, cleaning her. Yes, yeah. <laughs> in a manner of speaking. Yeah. <laughs> So come on over to my house and we'll watch porn and rug cleaning videos. <laughs> I'll think, watch the rug videos and I'll I'll <laughs> watch porn at my own house. Thanks though. <laughs> I, I finally decided nothing nothing ever happens in porn. Nothing. I was I was gonna tell a story about the surgery videos. So he worked in the medical industry and had all these VHS tapes of of you know <laughs> surgery. Yeah, in yeah. his office. And one time I was there after school or something. I was like six years old, and he just pops one in. And he's like, <laughs> check this out. And I really think that's one of the root causes of my morbid nature. But you know, it was an education. It was an education. Yeah, yeah. I don't hold it against you, but it I've was it was one. it was surprising. Yeah. But yeah. you know, uh, uh, um, every, all porn is pretty much the same. I remember when I was uh, living in New York, it became a big thing to do like full length movies with plots, with real plots. Yeah. But still ended the same way, you know. <laughs> so after years of watching, it's just the evolution of storytelling, Alex. It, it is its own form of storytelling. I was saying it's the evolution of storytelling or devolution of storytelling. Yeah. Well, yeah. It does. Everyone does have a climax. Yeah. So. Sure. Can, we, can we talk about Trump or something, please? <laughs> <laughs> we're doing this for Brian's. I thought when you were going to, I honestly thought when you were going to ask what the two had in common, I thought you were going to say rug burns. I, I honestly thought. That was what... <laughs> They both, they both require knee pads. Is that what I'm you just say? saying? Yeah, you know, I'm just saying. <laughs> so, how are you doing, Brian? You were at work, right? Yeah, doing good. Yeah, yeah. He was. It's He's fired now. We're <laughs> getting a yeah. call from HR. <laughs> well, you see, you don't do this with earphones, so people can hear what I'm saying, right? Uh, if you hear me disconnect quickly, uh, it's because. People are walking in. <laughs> <laughs> well, this could be, we could all pretend like we're a work call. Yeah. 
<laughs> like what exactly does that's you... not worth my job it's not worth the chance of now, anything what your so. company does is it it creates a, a testing system yes for yeah. diseases right God. yes okay yes yes we do a dna testing for anthrax and infection okay so we could just pretend like we're all people interested in anthrax or something <laughs> Yeah. You know, and so if they walk in, let us know and we'll start talking anthrax. <laughs> Actually, that yeah, okay, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, that's great. He's thinking to himself, how did you get anthrax in the horn? I'm gonna lose my job now. <laughs> yeah, I gotta see if she knows who Alex Bennett is. Maybe she if she was raised in this area, I'll ask her. Maybe I get off the hook. Listen to him when I ask him this question. How many years have you been working for that company? Over 20 years now. So, okay. So here's the bad part of this is they just asked me to do a tour. I do all the tours for the different facilities. <clears throat> they asked me to do a tour for college students. So usually I open up, oh yeah, my name is Brian Neary. I'm the director of manufacturing in charge of all IVD. I've been here for 20 years. All these kids, when I when I take them on a tour on Wednesday, they're going to look up at me and say, 20 years? Wow, I wasn't even born yet. <laughs> and then they I'm going to end the tour years, then. They bought the 20 years, Brian. But, you know, uh, in, in they today's, bought the 20 years. In today's marketplace, 20 years is a long time. They say yeah, that about 9-11, too. They huh? say yeah, there's only a handful of people here that have been longer than me now. So, Yeah, I mean... Uh, uh, my friend Shecky was at Letterman for what thirty-two years, thirty-one years. Wow! Yeah. yeah, yeah. But and and that's what I consider a long time, a really long time, especially in yeah. show business. But the thing is, with all the companies that are downsizing whenever they want to see their stock go <clears> up, <throat> something like that, to think about anybody holding a job for twenty years today is almost impossible to believe. Yeah, and the, you also have a lot of people that hop jobs. You know, they 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 go from company to company, making more money and more money. They may not have stocks because they don't stay too long, but they you know they they go from this company to the next one, trying to make more money. Because sometimes if you're in the same position, it's a small percentage every year. But if you can get promotions, that's where you make the jump in money. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, it's it's really. Um... Uh, I, I just today they just like fire people like crazy, and I just can't see how anybody can hold on to a job for twenty years. You're nodding your head, yes, Andrew. Have you been involved in getting fired in this economy? Me? No, thankfully. Yeah, but I work in a very niche industry, and within that industry, there's so much of exactly what was just being discussed: the people moving around every. 18 months for you know a three percent pay raise and basically the same you know same shit different city i think the reason is is that the companies today don't have a loyalty towards their employees and so their employees why they should they have a you know a loyalty to them you know That's you go, exactly you, right yeah. well you go yeah. to a place my, like my loyalty is is to my colleagues not to my employer yeah well Which you go to you, you go to japan and people stay with the company for all their lives. Yeah. The companies, I mean, but the companies treat them well. You know. Yeah. Two two of the people on my team have been at my company for 30 plus years. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And other people, but it's classical music publishing, so it's very niche. What is yeah. that niche? Yes. Yeah. Tell me about it. Yeah. It, 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 does classical music publishing uh, published works still sell yeah it's it's less so sales that drive revenue it's more so uh licensing and okay. um for most of the larger orchestra works um symphonies operas whatever we don't mm -hmm. sell those materials we only rent them so that we can um make as much money as possible so you would rent out a symphony and all the parts for that symphony to a symphony orchestra, they would use right. the, the music and then they would send it back to you, right? Yep. And you charge them X number of dollars. Depending That's on how many performances and what piece and what the venue capacity is and yeah. whether or not they're doing a radio broadcast or a live stream broadcast or another audio, but you know, there are all these factors. Yeah. yeah. Oh, look who's there, Mandy. 
Hi. 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 Thought no, I was so, hey. so uh, I, you know, I would. What's the most popular classical work you sell? Sorry, Alex. I'm eating chips. It's very <laughs> unprofessional. It's okay. <laughs> um, year in and year out, it's probably Samuel Barber's Adagio for Strings or the um, Shostakovich Fifth Symphony. But okay. it goes up and down, you know. Wow. Wow. Now, does contemporary stuff like John Williams stuff ever come into, uh, into mm -hmm. yeah? John Williams has his own. John, so uh, film music is really interesting because for the most part, the film studios own the copyrights to the scores. And even people like John Williams are contracted, you, you know, are, are sort of independent contractors. They're, they do their work for hire. Now, yeah. if you are uh, smart and have a good agent, you will ask for and hopefully retain, uh, if not your publishing and your intellectual property, you'll at least retain the right to create what are called derivative works. So for instance, if Star Wars in concert happens, that's all, well, I guess it's, it's Disney now. I was gonna say Fox, but it's Disney now. Um, but if John Williams plays with the Vienna Philharmonic, A Night with John Williams, and it's slightly modified versions of his most iconic film music, yeah, um, I would assume that he has that publishing because I would assume he has a great- Because like Shostakovich would be in public domain, right? Not no. all of it, no. Oh, really? Because no. he died in 1975, Alex. Oh, did he really? Oh, yeah, he, he lived a while. Yeah, I thought he was. I thought he was died earlier than that. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, so certain early works, because there are all of these different uh, yeah. internationally, but also within our yeah. country, there are different sort of ways in which things are protected. After a certain period, it just depends on what year the author died. Mm -hmm. Before a certain period, it depends on what year the work was originally published. Yeah, And then that stuff differs from uh, when you cross international borders. I just want to jump in here. Ma M Mandy, where are you now? Are you going to teach your class? I am soon. I just got home. I had to go do something for my mom. So oh, Okay. And then you're going to your class? Yes, yeah, so I got. I came home. <laughs> so I'm at home right now. Okay. See, that's her home. She. How long How long have you been? How long you own that now? Uh, a year and a half. A year and a half. Mm-hmm. Are you happy being a homeowner? Oh, yeah. I, mean, I like it. It's a lot of work, though, isn't it? I mean, you know, there's always something going wrong. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I haven't, I've haven't. i been lucky so far. I haven't really had anything wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we have a, so we have a lot of people here now. Gosh, this is like 12, 13, 14 people. 14, 14. yeah, yeah. So how's everything? How's everything at work, Mandy? It was fine. Like I said, I just had to leave. I had to go take care of something for my mom at her doctor. Um, but it, you know, when you deal with Kaiser Permanente, I know I've told you guys that's what she has, and they're so hard to deal with. So I had oh, to actually. It's what my friend oh, uh, Larry Bubble. I cannot call them on the phone. It's impossible to get anything done on the well, phone. Kaiser but... Permanente, which was what I Kaiser Hospital was, what I was raised on when I was a kid. In California, in San Francisco, where it started, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, uh, but uh, my friend Larry Bubbles Brown got us in trouble one day because we had Kaiser Permanente as an advertiser in San Francisco <clears throat> who took out spots on the news uh, and especially the traffic. You know, this traffic brought to you by Kaiser Permanente because mm -hmm. we almost lost them because Bubbles said, we're brought to you today by Kaiser Permanente, better known as Doctor Assisted Suicide. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. uh, that didn't go over too well. No, that not. No. We, we tried to explain to Kaiser that if somebody makes a joke about you like that, it's good for you because you don't. If you if you don't complain, then they think you're good guys. You know, you yeah. can make a joke. But if you if you want to dump us, then you look like the bad guys because you can't take a joke. But mm -hmm. they were not amused, I bet. They, oh no, they were not <laughs> amused. But in the my father died in a Kaiser hospital. 
I figure it is doctor assisted suicide. So, you know, those are, those are back in the days. When, you know, it's amazing how little they knew about medicine then. And it's amazing how little they know about medicine now, you know? Um, I, I just, I'm amazed by like, I have neuropathy. They have no way of solving the problem of neuropathy. They don't have a drug to give you because it seems like oh, they have a drug they give you. Yeah, they I have take pills it. and creams and this and that, but nothing works. You know, you would it. think you would think enough people in this country, as they get older, especially they get neuropathy, would go out and say, "We're going to have a war on on neuropathy," and they, they'd be some kind of medical procedure or creams or lotions or drugs or whatever that would mitigate it. I mean, we've solved some of the most horrible diseases of all time. Can't we solve that? I mean, look, yeah. we took care of COVID in a week and a half for crying out loud. So you know. Anyway, but uh, so you're going to go teach people to be healthy today? Yeah, I'm going to teach my fitness class, Mix Sticks. Oh, and, and do you do, do, you do it with music? Yes, it's uh, music. Yep. Say that 10 times fast. Do you bring, <laughs> do you bring your own music? Uh, yeah, I have a playlist of stuff with like routines to the songs. Yeah. It's just like, lightweight, like, they're like they're not t typical hand weights. They're they're like little barbells that are just like one and a half pounds or two pounds. Yeah. They're like plastic. Is this an older group? The age varies. We mostly have just women, maybe forty and up. Oh, okay. I would. Say. Um, but yeah, it's it's fun. Belly dancing Wednesday night. We're gonna have a belly dancer come in and teach a belly dancing class. Oh really? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, 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 40 year, years of age, uh, those people are re referred to as, uh, what do they call people who are women who are at 40 years of age? Oh, yeah. Un Alex Bennett's uh, demo. Recently divorced. <laughs> recently, recently divorced. divorced. <laughs> yeah. Um, why, why, why do we work out? To make ourselves look better for other people? Is that the main motivation? That's no, for women, but it's once they once you do it you realize you feel better you yeah. should be you can be strong you'll have better bones you'll have better balance and as healthy you, too yeah the Where dopamine hit is extreme the dopamine hit is extreme when you work out you feel so good after yeah, yeah. And, and you once you get in the habit of it once you do it 30 60 days then you or in the habit, and then once you do it for several years, then you actually feel bad. If yeah, but you know, you know the reason why we they they also work out. I got to tell you, and run and so on, is for the basically the the uh, drug high. Yeah, and you say, That's what drug, saying, and I'm saying it's endorphins. Uh, it, it, your body reacts to pressure like that by creating endorphins, and people get a runner's high from mm -hmm. running. Yeah. If you exert yourself, I've run and I never get high because I, you know, run about from here to there and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> running is, I guess running is good for some people, but I, I just, I, I, I went I, through bad for your knees and stuff. I don't know. I went through a period of exercising. I went to a gym. I had a girlfriend who met me there every day it was the motivation and I actually, I got myself a nice chest going and everything, you know. And what happened? What happened? <laughs> one, day I'm on, one day I'm on the bicycle, you know, pedaling and going, I'm sick of doing this. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere, you know. And I just, I just, I just, I guess matured <clears throat> out of something. And I stopped. Also, I broke up with the girlfriend, so she wasn't meeting me at the gym anymore. So... I didn't have to get there at a certain time and do a certain amount and so on and so forth. Yeah. Well, I like this fitness studio, but, but once I started doing a, like teaching, got certified in some formats, I thought it was kind of cool, like to get paid. And so I get to work out for free. Plus I get paid mm -hmm. a little bit of money. It's like side money, you know, yeah. but you're not, you're not doing it for the, are you doing it for the money? You're doing it for the, uh, no, I would do it. I don't, I hope nobody's listening. Yeah. I would do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well then that's, that's what as it should be everybody the jobs they have they should be willing to do for free because they want to do it that much you know and they like it 
And, yeah. And then, then, you know, you really enjoy your job. I mean, the truth of the matter was when I first started at Sirius XM, I wasn't getting paid. And I just said, I just want to work. You know, I want to do this. Well, within three months, they started paying me because they felt guilty about it, I think. <laughs> You've just but, described every single podcaster out there right there with that. Alex. <laughs> you know, I, do what we I love had, to do without I getting paid. I had a guy who who probably had one of the largest watch podcasts out there, Gilbert Godfrey. Yep. And one Christmas, we're at a party together, as we were every Christmas, and he says to me, he says, you do podcasts, right? I said, yeah. He says, how do you make money out of them? <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, if he's not making money out of it, who is making money out of podcasts? You know, yeah, you, yeah but he you, did through bookings, though. He did through his audience would come and see him. Well, you know, he, he had something else he could sell. He could yeah. show up at a club and a, a, a crowd would show up and he'd make more money from the owner of the club because he, you know, could bring in the audience. You're right there. That's it yeah, should stand be, ups. You, stand ups have a very clear through line. It just increases their audience and it gets them. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you do your yeah. podcast out of love, right? Absolutely. Primarily. Primarily. That's it. You know, yep. I do this out of love and for the, the tons of money that I make. From. <laughs> well, ask, ask Charlie about his empowering. Would you do it with, if you, I'm sure you get paid, right? I yeah. get paid, yeah, but I do a special Olympics every year for free. Yeah. So would you, would you do it even if you didn't get paid? The other, the yeah. regular. Yeah, yeah, I probably would. <laughs> It's fun. Because he enjoys it. You, you do the Special Olympics, do you? Yeah. I have a plaque here somewhere from the Special Olympics for doing uh, a, a a show for them. Uh, and, uh, in fact, do you ever see that picture of me with Robin Williams and Jerry Seinfeld and uh, Dana Carvey and Kevin Pollack? No. Yeah, it's a, a picture I put up occasionally on the web. And... Uh, that was taken as Special Olympics uh, performance, yeah, that we did one year. So, that was, uh, it, it, one of the, one of the things I would do stuff for because I thought they were very good in what they did. Uh, explain the Special Olympics quickly. We have to go here, but just explain it so people know what. Well, the, these are, uh, I guess you call them handicapped or, or whatever yeah. people that. that participate in sports and in my case softball you know these are people that some of them in wheelchairs some of them just have you know yeah one kid had one leg and had an artificial leg on the other you know, stuff like that well they love me at the special olympics because i i run as much as they do <laughs> <laughs> oh that was a bad joke horrible <laughs> horrible <laughs> Terrible. We lost Brian, but I want to thank him for being here initially. I want to also thank Charlie for being here today. This is always so nice, isn't it? Uh, Marjorie? Yes. Thank you for being here. Paula, always good to see you. And we'll see you here. A couple what? of weeks. A couple of weeks. Uh, and uh, uh, let's see here. Oh, yeah. Up in, uh, up in Canada, we got uh, Mike Chisholm. And then there's the lovely and attractive Andrew Deutsch. Thank you, Andrew. We really appreciate it always that you're here. Thanks to, uh, uh, he hasn't said a word during the whole show, John Ewing. <laughs> Say something, John. Great to see everybody, Alex. Okay. Good to have you here. Uh, Thank you. Francine Witch, she's been quiet today too, but that's fine. You know, we just like to all have you here. Uh, uh, Charlene hasn't said much of anything. In fact, I think I've done most of the talking. Uh, Leon, Len, you've been quiet, kind of quiet today. Yeah, I'm tired. I just got in from Chicago about 10 minutes ago. What? <laughs> it started a what? I, so I just got back from Chicago about a half an hour ago. So bye-bye, oh, oh, uh, Mandy. Oh, bye. You got to go? Is that what you're uh, implying? I'm still here. Oh, you're still there. Yeah. Thanks for calling today, and thanks also to Jeffrey and Andrew. Uh, Andrew is uh, Jeff's son, um, and he's a great guy because I've met him personally in the past. 
everybody it's time to close off here but we have to close off by having somebody close us off who closes off every show his name is edward berger and he signs us off by saying that's all folks okay <laughs> goodbye everybody hope we see you next week love it thank you bye-bye